the psychic, the psychic weakness comes from the endless opposition between principles of pleasure and of reality. Without necessarily opposing themselves, they are not principle of reality serves the principles of pleasure in order to identify the context in which motions of desire could lead to an immediate satisfaction, provoke social disagree disagreements and retaliations. As a scout of the principle of pleasure, the principle of reality represents the cultural versant of the psychic apparatus. It plays the role what first 1912, the neurotic currency, the neurotische Währung. The social currency represents the recurrences of psychic involvement a civilization is ready to admit and forces to repeat the same behavior in several situations that look alike. For, exa for example, a neurotic currency imposes itself in situation of mourning. To go into a certain behavior that can enter in contradiction with the secret feeling of satisfaction one can have after the disappearance of someone. The psychic expense realized into that neurotic currency assure to the subjects some untroubled satisfaction, but these satisfaction are only partial. Considering that the subjects remain only partially satisfied, so that is, um, Consequently, also unsatisfied, this sensible currency represent is salary. Freud speaks about it in, the term, in these terms, eine Belohnung. In many cases, one is symbolically paid with different, differed promises for having accepted neurotic modalities with respect to the instinctive involvements, like the, religion, the religious promise of a paradise waiting for us after our death. Freud wrote in the interpretation of dreams that thoughts in daytime are like an investor using the unconsciousness as a capital. In that context, the neurotic currency reminds us that this capital has to be placed in adequate social forms <coughs> in order to grow in the interest of the psychic apparatus. The economic lexicon appears in a systematic manner in Freud's Metapsychology writings of 1915. Quantitative data that are hard to establish come into account. Freud speaks then of amounts, Beitrag, that characterize the psychic drives and establish their destiny in the context of negotiation between the uh, uh, unconscious, preconscious, and conscious systems of the psychic apparatus. The more drive has an amount of charge, the more it will cost the subject to repress it. The drives charged with an important so-called amount excite the psychic apparatus. The economic aim is the level of excitation. What Freud calls the psychic expense of van consists in the satisf satisfactions related to symbolic acts or affirmations in the cultural field. I will describe the three economical characteristics of the psychic drives. They are charged by a certain amount of effects. They put continuously the consciousness under pressure, and they present themselves under the form of a rep representation. The drives organize, uh, originate from a source, quelle des tribus, from which they put the consciousness under pressure. They are like a fund originating from a primitive repression, the Urverlängung. The psychic expense in the cultural forms is endless. And if the expense can be done without any resistance in the culture, the work of repressing them, the drives, is also logically endless. It is to say that the repression never means the unilateral expulsion of a drive that doesn't fit with the cultural constraints, but a border or permanent resistance against the assault of the drives. The psychic apparatus has to finance the work of resistance, that means find the energy to do so. The drives appear under the form of representations. They don't appear as such, but as Vorstellungsrepresentants, Freud says, that means the symbolic representation under which they appear in the psychic apparatus are also representative in the meaning of a delegation of the drive. These images are representation of the drive as they represent them. The instinct 
structures, the drives are committed and expanded. Um, the instinctive drive are committed and expanded in representation that allow the reduction of the level of excitement in the psychic apparatus. So, the drive charge with an amount of force appears as and evolves continuously in a way that negotiations occur between instinctive charges and the cultural resistance of the system of consciousness. The drives don't remain static in the psychoeconomic process of repression. The representations, Vorstellungen, in which they appear, must continuously be defigured in order to fit with the constraints of the cultural life. From representations, they become disfigurement and they go through the process of transformation. The disfigurements of the instinctive representations allow any expense that should rather not be too direct. It is a question of detail, details. Was ein mehr oder weniger an Anstellung leistet, kann auch sozusagen am anderen Ende des Apparates durch eine Modifikation in den Bedingungen der Lust und Lustproduktion erzielt werden. Das ist, das ist Freud. These modifications are at the center of the negotiation perpetuated in the psychic apparatus. They evolve, evolve throughout unperceivable changes, durch Verschiebung auf Kleinstes, Indifferentes. Freud writes, eine Tendenz zu, zur intakten Herstellung der Verdrängung, verdrängten Vorstellung ist meist unverkennbar. Freud elaborates three systems to explain the way the psychic apparatus works. All the conscious, the preconscious, and the unconscious systems have their own domain of operation, the preconscious system plays the role of the custom in front of the socially irrelevant drives. The preconscious system works like the outpost of the conscious system and select the thoughts that can go on in the cultural sphere and the one that have to be denied and repressed. To resist to the assault of the tribes, um, the drives, the conscious system elaborates a counter instance able to divert the instinctive charges that are irrelevant on a cultural basis. It has to fight back against um, the these instinctive representations in order to disfigure them and adjust them to the social constraints. The instant the instance devoted to act as a mediator between the conscious and the unconscious uh, system is so the preconscious system. At that point, the economical question is how will the psychic apparatus find the energy to do that work? Where will it find the strength to finance this counter process? It is an expensive work to continuously repress the drives as for Die Verdrängung erfordert einen anhaltenden Kraftaufwand. The value of an instinctive expense is based on the psychic cost of the repression. This value evolves in regard of the force the preconscious system has to use in order to transform the instinctive representations that aren't acceptab acceptable in the cultural sphere. And of course, the goal of the preconscious system is to deal that have to be repressed at the lowest cost. This is the point where I want to get. In Freud's text, we read, the Erhaltung einer Verdrängung setzt also eine beständige Kraftausgabe voraus und ihre Aufhebung bedeutet eine Ersparung. So, what one calls an in the social sphere, the satisfaction of a desire, so to, say, so to say, is in reality related to the fact of sparing energy in the work of repressing the drives. Since it law to the preconscious system to permanently repress the instinctive assaults, it has to find a way to spare which within the process ersparen, says Freud. Now, does this preconscious system spare energy? The instinctive representation that has been once repressed will try to come to the conscious sphere as a thought, an expression, or an action. In this process, the instinctive representation will be less displaced as transformed, modified, altered. The way from the
pattern to the conscious system doesn't implicate a displacement, but a qualitative modification of the psychic work. The pre-conscious system is, so to say, clever. It uses precisely of unconscious of investment to realize the repression. That is a paradox. The forms of representation that will be negotiated transformed in order to fit in the cultural world will so that they can themselves contribute to repression. This is where the economy of the psychic process stands to domesticate the unconscious drives so that they serve the effort of repressing the part of them that are socially unacceptable or irrelevant. The conscious and unconscious system are tightened together. Freud writes, Ein Teil dieses Vorbewussten stammt aus dem Unbewussten, hat den Charakter der Unbewussten, also the Vorstellungsrepräsentanz, Und unterliegt einer Zensur, werden kann. Thus, the economy consists to differ the fantasy of a pure satisfaction. Satisfaction is made at a cost of occurrences that are incomplete. The value, Freud says, the avert of a repression is measured by the capacity to transform at the lowest psychic cost the representations into cultural forms that will themselves afterward contribute to this effort of transformation for the occurrences to come. Now, let's consider that it is already at the surface of the conscious phenomenon that occurs the negotiation between the pre-conscious and the unconscious systems. So the psychic process occurs not in the inner self of a very private and intimate experience, but already in the cultural level of signs, symbols, and acts and forms. The psychic economy occurs nowhere than in the economical material of the cultural sphere between signs, forms, and goods. That is why the metapsychology Freud elaborated in 1915 has so much to do with philosophy, aesthetic, and economics. The psychic negotiation occurs among the process itself. There, the psychic expense realized under the form of the neurotic currency use specifically the accessories of the economics. The psychic economy and the economics aim all alike in reducing the effort of repressing instinctive forces. The symbol of money is one of the social elements where these psychic negotiations occur. Why money? Because it adapts itself to almost all objects, almost all situations, all languages. Money allows also secrecy regarding where it comes from when someone uses it. It's also always easy to really understand. It's not always easy to understand the practical reason of its prestige. It's also a new manner. Money appears in Freud's work precisely when the is about the way the repression occurs with the energy obtained by drives uh, diverted from their first trajectory. When Freud speaks about the psychic principle of sparing the Ersparung in his second essay of the 1915 Metapsychology uh, essay, uh, texts, he refers himself to his essay on the Witz, their Witz, uh, on Seine Beziehung zu dem Unbewussten, in which he addressed the question in 1905. In that essay, to spare on a psychic level refers effectively to the moment when the preconscion can spare an effort of repression while giving to an instinctive representation an access to the cultural world that it should not allow in reality.